Okay, so the lures I'm going to be using on this next trip, uh, the enticer subsurface tweak bait here, and the enticer minnow topwater sub. I'm going to be using this and I'm going to be trying to explain the best ways to use these lures and the differences between the lures because it can be uh, a little bit confusing because they both start with enticer and um, they both look a little bit similar. Just looking at them you can see that there's a, a wedge on the front of the nose of the enticer and uh, the enticer minnow and the enticer subsurface tweak plate is more of a rounded front. Of course there's um, two hooks on the tweak bait, there's one towel hook on the enticer minnow. Okay so first of all the enticer minnow top water sub. So although this is a top water lure and is generally used splashing around on the top imitating an injured or fleeing bait fish, you can drop it just below the surface and up which is very effective or even drop it down quite deep which I've done many times and had some really good snapper uh, that way. So I'm going to try in this video to try to show you some of the methods that you can use if you've got this lure that might help you or if you're thinking of getting it, you know, how you could use it better with a bit more success. Okay, next the enticer subsurface tweak bait. As you can see this one's been rigged with two hooks, but you can easily use this one with just a towel hook, either a single or a treble, depending on what you want to do. So it really depends on the conditions. Two hooks is going to hold it in the water better. Um, one hook has a little bit more of a lively action. Um, so it really depends on the conditions you've got to play around with it, but it works well both ways. It just gives you another option. Okay, so this one is worked with sweeping, sweeping pulls of the rod tip or little taps to create that injured fleeing kind of fish. Okay, I'm on the south coast today. I've got a chance to test a 15 gram tweak bait because the uh, west coast is huge and dirty, over three and a half meters. But here it's, it's, it's calmer, it's a lot calmer. And the sea's, the sea's still got some color to it, but you know, decent for bass fishing. Now when I'm working any of the tweak baits, you've got the option of some kind of sweeping actions, sort of longer pulls of the rod tip to give it a fleeing fish effect, or smaller little taps more regular to give it that injured fish. And both methods work, I would say over shallower rocks and when you want to slow it down, the smaller taps is going to be probably the best method for, for that. Maybe some some larger kind of sweeps of the rod tip if you're in more open water fishing would also be effective. Yeah and of course you've always got the option of letting the lure drop down a bit but for bass fishing in general you're not going to be fishing in such deep waters well I generally don't anyway so I like to keep the lure you know a foot or so a foot under the surface maximum because if you're fishing in fairly shallow waters or even if it's a few meters like some spots the bass are going to see it and you're not going to lose it on the rock either so this is a subsurface lure I mean you can bring it to the top of course, splashing along the top as well at times if you want over shallow ground, just raise the rod tip up and that will bring the lure up, right this one right over those rocks, and I can see the rocks under there, it's not really shallow here but it's really one and a half meters there, I'm just going to tweak it through I paused it and then bam it hit and I paused it a while nice little bass that so it's on a single hook there just gonna bring it up
Okay, so yeah, so I was fishing with a 15 gram tweet, giving it the first real test out and um, managed to hit this nice bass. Just um, been, was tweaking it through over some rocks there and just paused it for a second and boom, this bass hit it. So I'm really pleased that because I knew it would work just seeing the action but uh, of the lure. Um, but yeah, it's obviously good to actually hook one with it. So well pleased with that. Right out there, seems to be a lot of dorada around and they're like in this lure. It's not that I've never caught them before on lures. I have over the 25 years of fishing over here, but as I generally fish with bigger lures, you don't get so many hits from these. Just like occasionally when I'm using a small lure. So, so yeah, it's nice on the smaller days because I can see this picking up a wider variety of fish, including smaller bass. Well, hopefully I've got... Oh, that's a bass. I think it's a bass anyway. Or is it a variety? It came up right behind it. Well, the reason they're staying on, I see the way that it um, hit the lure. It swam behind and followed it. That's fantastic. Okay, this is a little Sophia from the Dorada family. The general rule for me is the bigger the swell, the heavier the lure. I use from 15 grams right up to 90 grams, depending on the conditions. You know, if the conditions are big and the water's a little bit dirty, then definitely I would go for a heavier lure. But for me, in general, if you can get away with a smaller lure, it casts a long distance, I think it's the best because it's gonna open up more options for you. Okay, so when you're using the sub tweak, you first got to decide if you're going to have a one or two hook setup. Basically, with one hook, the action is a little bit more livelier and more erratic than the two hook setup. Two hooks will keep that lure down more subsurface easier, of course. But bass generally follow lures from subsurface, so one hook can be just enough anyway. But that belly hook's always an option and definitely worthwhile having in certain conditions. It's also a lot of fun putting some action into the lures as you get the feeling that it's something you did that actually caused that fish to strike. I tend to use the two hook setup on the bigger lures and one towel hook on the smaller versions. Working the lure is effective with a steady wind with taps of the rod tip to create that injured fish action. You can also use longer sweeps for a fleeing fish effect. Let's just see what's working really. It's definitely a lure that if you spend time with it, it can become more effective. If you come into shallow areas where it's really rocky, just lift that rod tip up high and tweak it over those areas just to avoid getting it snagged. It also drives bass crazy when they see it splashing along the surface and swimming. So then I tried the 90 gram, we've painted this one, it's something we're working on at the moment. And second cast, uh, yeah, this one hit it, so I was pleased with that. Okay, see if there's any more. going to try and get out here looks good into that channel there okay that's gone a mile out right out past those rocks I'm just going to splash it along the top again just little taps of the rod tip there's all reef and boulders out there it's just perfect bass ter territory when it gets in the shallow and rocks, it's good to have your lure for me on the surface to see where it is clearly. See, what, see exactly what's going on. And nice to see the bass hit it if there's one. 
also with the shallow areas, you know, less chance of losing that lure. You keep the rod tip up, give this entice some minnow, little taps to the rod tip. As you're winding, just splash it along the surface. What I especially like to do when it's in um, over shallow rocks and ledges where you know they could be bass, is just slow down, just give lots of little taps, lots of little taps, small taps to the rod tip, and don't wind too fast, just wind up the slack basically. And it will just, you can just keep it hovering over those areas where there's a good chance of a hookup. And it will just be sort of plenty of action wiggling around. I also like to work this one between top water and just below, splashing it up and swimming it through. Also, it's a really effective way to use the lure. I mean, you can let it drop down in deeper water, of course, but I very rarely do that with bass fishing. Just, you know, just vary that retrieve a bit, just splash it along the top, using lots of little taps of that rod there. That's on its having a go. I'm on. I'm just going to try and keep it up. Just keep it up on the top because blimey, it's big. Please don't come off. Well, it looks quite big anyway. Just keep it on that surface and get it through these rocks here. Ah, that line just. That's a good sized bass. Just don't want to get the line on anything. It's a really good bass. Okay, now that is the biggest bass so far. That's a really nice, well into the double figures, that one. Um, I was fishing further along and I looked down the coast and I thought it looked really good so I wondered if I could get down and uh, wade out a bit so just splashing along not too quick just splashing along there just gonna tap that rod tip good air uh, I'm on That one just took it in the same place. <coughs> right on the edge of that ledge. Flipping it. Lucky I got him over those rocks to start with. Right, this one's literally hooked just on the lip and so I've been I've been really lucky today that they stayed on because easily could have lost some of these so yeah this one straight was right on that ledge and just as I brought it over the ledge he hit it again so yeah it's been a fantastic day's fishing